I'm Anne Marie Oman. I'm an author and a teacher, and I have the privilege today of being here with a dear friend, Keith Taylor. And yeah, those those, those beautiful geese, geese just flew, just flew over. over. Yeah. I we are here at the University of Michigan Biological Station Research Station at Pelston, outside of Pelston, and I'm in his backyard with him. He lives here in a tiny rustic cabin. And uh, I've known Keith for many, many years. He's a poet, writer, thinker, observer of scientists. And uh, Keith is going to do some reading of poems that are related or inspired by his work here at University of Michigan Biological Station here near Pelston on this beautiful lake. So, but Keith, what have you got? Well, I mean, there's a couple things having to do with, with the space we're in now. Um, in, in 2010, um, we thought that wolves had returned to the Lower Peninsula. And, and what hit me was how the presence of wolves changed the place. Um, I mean, I'm not frightened of them, but I'd come out here at night and look across at this wonderful second growth forest, and it changed thinking that there were there's wolves. An, there's there. an alertness yeah, exactly. that comes on, exactly. I think. Exactly, you know, you know. And, and, uh, <laughs> so there was that. But then, of course, I mean, these are scientists after all, so they have to test things. So by the next summer, we knew some different things. So I had to write, in, in, in between, I had published this poem. So I had to, uh, I had, in the Dunes Review. So I had to uh, write an addendum okay. after it. So you, the poem's not over until you get through the addendum. Okay. In the presence of large predators. We're sure now. Wolves have found their way back here to the lower peninsula. First reported by a park ranger looking north across the straits through snow, uncertainly watching a gray pair skitter across the ice, their tracks lost in the storm. Then only a few prints for years, some scat found 20 miles south before a night vision camera catches movement and the lanky legs, massive chest and triangular head, those green eyes glowing once again here enter the frame. And even though we've learned our lessons and fear there are many reasons not to celebrate anything without reservation, we listen expectantly with hope for the quiet yip of pups hiding close to an overgrown two-track road or look off across the lake peering through fog at the far shore to a woods suddenly transformed into forest alive again under fragile light. Addendum after the DNA. Okay. So they're coyotes, or only the mother was a wolf. We have nothing to worry about. And another one? One more Sure, for us? well, let's see. Uh, yeah, I can, one that's, that's, that's placed here, uh, from a lecture here, we have summer lectures um, of, of people doing science, visiting people, and sometimes the people who are here. This was a memologist from the University of Michigan named Phil Myers, who's here again this year. We're just down, spending our nights down there watching the flying squirrels behind us. Oh, um, love that. And uh, um, he was giving a lecture on his study of the movement of the mice. And for years, um, he studied uh, the, the Paramiscus mice, the white-footed mouse and the deer mouse. When he started his study, the southern half of the state was all white-footed mouse and the northern half of the state was all deer mice. Now there are only white-footed mice. The deer mice, you've got to go to fairly isolated parts of the of the upper peninsula to find, mm -hmm. or the offshore islands have deer mice, but mm -hmm. there's none on the lower peninsula. It's all white-footed mice. I think. So, and I was thinking watching this lecture, so all these things we hear about climate change, melting ice caps, mm -hmm. Greenland turning to water, the Northwest Passage open, and you know, but this isn't all that. This is like a mouse. This is a little creature, yeah. yeah. So this is called Not the Northwest Passage, and it is dedicated oh, to film Myers. Not the Northwest Passage, just the white-footed mouse, delicate and doe-eyed, only 25 grams of unrelenting passion pushing north a few feet each generation through duff on the forest floor, old logs or tunnels under deep snow, always north, attacking the necessary and impenetrable wall of cold. Mm. Now, I ended that on a question mark um, in the book, and I, I don't think I'm going to use that question mark anymore. Um, is that it? Is it attacking the necessary? Yeah. yeah. What do I know? You know, I'm just a poet stealing <laughs> somebody else's research. Um, yeah, but, but I, I, what I'm fascinated by is how that that little, that 
big research project gets encapsulated in these eight lines that then become accessible, we hope, we to hope. people. Yeah, and yeah. you know, that, that, I mean, at least anybody who spends any time outside a city in Michigan lives with mice. Then this summer is an explosion of mice. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, and that poem has gone around, and I don't think, uh, I mean, Phil knows that. He's been in the audience when I've read it in public. Um, so I don't think he, uh, you know, he hasn't told me that Keith, he really got that poem wrong. So, um, so I'm gonna say it's okay. So, thank you. Sure. My Thanks. final question based on all of this is, you know, you, I asked you earlier how to observe how the scientists have changed in the, in the 10, 11 years you've been working here. So as you think into your, the attitudes that you hold, do you feel more optimistic or not so optimistic or is it, a, is it? Um, it's interesting because I'm just dealing with that issue. The last book I teach here, which is right now, is E.O. Wilson's Biophilia, where he, and E.O. Wilson is, you know, I mean, deeply accomplished field biologist, probably the most famous living field biologist of our time. And he insists over and over again. I mean, he just says things like, because I'm a scientist, I am optimistic. And, and I'm not sure that my friends here would at all, or even mostly, agree with him. Although they certainly feel like optimists when you don't feel like, uh, you know, the kind of pessimists we're used to. Um, yeah. You know, moody poets. Um, but see, I'm trying to figure out why Wilson says he's optimistic. And I think it's with Wilson, um, and that probably is replicated in some of these people, it is a um, belief in the process of evolution. Ah. Um, and, 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 and how it's not, and that process is not necessarily focused on us. You know, we may be an evolutionary side branch that dies out, but life itself um, will find a way to um, continue to move on. Um, and, and, and that is the glory of our planet, life. Whether there is the consciousness of life or not is, uh, is maybe not fundamentally the issue. Wow. So I hate to put words in E.O. Wilson's mouth because I could be entirely wrong. Um, but, um, but I think that's it. And I think I feel that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, we go up to Drummond Island a trip in a place there where you go and you sit on fossils of the first extinction. We go and we're reading the book, The Sixth Extinction, the extinction that's happening now. And we talk about, first talk about this book while sitting on these fossils that are 450 million years old. Um, and that's all we're sitting on. This is all fossils. Um, and 85% uh, of them died then. There was no genetic material that went on uh, to make it through the other four extinctions to the mm -hmm. moment we're at now. And, uh, but nonetheless, there it is. It's there. And life found a way from that massive extinction to keep going. Um, again, you don't want to beat the drum too loudly. Um, but... I think that, that it's something like that that E.O. Wilson's talking about when wow. he insists um, that he's an optimist and he is an optimist because he's a scientist. And there's, because he is a life scientist, there is no other way to be but to be an optimist. Yeah. yeah. So. Thank uh, you so much. My pleasure, Anne-Marie. Thank pleasure. you. Yeah. What, a, what a joyful conversation. Good, good.